Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase Live. We've got a great show for you today, but first I want to introduce my co-host on the show. we got two co-hosts, and this gentleman is on the, the radio in Philadelphia and hosts a show called My Bitter Sweet Philosophy. I want to welcome Julian Seward to the show. What's happening, Julian? Not much. Thank you for having me back. Thanks for, thanks for joining us here today. What's uh, My Bitter Sweet Philosophy? Tell us a little bit about your show now. So it's basically... Uh one of my pieces, one of my perspectives kind of plays to a playlist. Mm -hmm. I do poetry and I uh, also uh, am in love with music. So I kind of put, you know, the things I think about and uh, that to music and that kind of speak over it. So for better or for worse, that's where the bittersweet comes into play. And I just give you a little piece of myself. And we appreciate that. And thank you for being uh, part of the show here today. Kevin White, our co-host here on the R&B Showcase radio show. How you doing, man? Hey, Tim. Good to see you today. We've had quite a weekend this weekend, haven't we? With oh. the shows uh, down Atlantic City this weekend and... Uh, Got a chance to see some of our favorite R&B and soul and classic uh, acts um, uh, then. Mr. Will Hart. Will Hart of the Delphonics. And, and, uh, um, um, Delph um, with the Delphonics, as mm -hmm. you said. Um, Blue Magic. Mm -hmm. Got to see them. And you got to see Allure. Allure, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of your favorite groups, right? Uh, um, I grew up on them. Julian, that's, yeah. my, that's my era. <laughs> All cried out. Right. So, I, you should have came with us nice. uh, to, to the show. And we got to meet the Don't group Don't forget the invite next time. Yeah, I'll be there. Now I'm going to remember to do that now, you know. But that was a good thing. And, uh, of course, we had our, our previous show, a recent interview with the Spinners, who yes. were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's a good thing. So Amazing it's, show. It's good to be among the legends. But not just legends. We also have up-and-coming artists that appear on the show. And it's always great to have the opportunity to kind of give back to the, to the young folks and kind of bring them up along with us and uh, – and that in mind, we have a special guest who's an up-and-coming hip-hop rap artist, and he's actually bringing rap back. And we're going to take a look at a clip of his current single called Bring Back uh, Rap, and he's going to tell us more about it. Let's take a look at this uh, latest single from our special guest, Kaz 110. I watched them learn a different way, the OGs gave me the scoop, the OGs gave me the game, they told me go make a play, just make sure that it's legal and that you stay out the way, we gon' stay locked in the streets and we gon' make sure you safe, so piss me off, I make the call and have you taken away, and yeah, I tried to keep it legal to the best my ability, then start stealing and robbing, the strong arm is what interests me, had to turn my life around, because my mama depend on me, grandson on these tracks, I'm evil to when I'm they screaming cash back on my damn, peep how I snap, I'm the man, clear how I rap like Saran, I'm on that path chasing bands, Got off my gritty for a while, that wasn't part of the plan but Don't accept me cause I differ from usual anomaly Tape on the way and we gon' see who's the hottest commodity Cash His latest single is called Bring Rap Back. We're going to welcome to the show Cass 110. Welcome to the show. What's happening, man? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing today? I'm all right. I'm glad to be here. All right. You got uh, your crew here with you today. Introduce this young man. I got my little brother with me here, man. Tawan Howard. He's a boxer. Okay. Upcoming boxer. Okay. What's up, what's up? What's up? All right. How you doing, Tawan? Chilling, chilling. Glad, glad to, to have here. you with us, brother. Thank you. Up and coming. You still doing your boxing there, right? Yes, sir. Have you had any, any fights yet? Still. Or are you still uh, training? Healing. Still, still, still training. Still training. You're training. Still training. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm glad to have you both with us here today. Thank, thank and uh, welcome to the show. And uh, congratulations on your, your latest single, uh, Bring Rap Back. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the song, Bring Rap Back? Because, you know, we kind of all grew up in with rap, you know, with, uh, was it right, the 50th right. anniversary now? Hip -hop, yeah, 50th Kevin anniversary of hip-hop yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. Hip-hop and rap and around. I mean, it's hard to believe it's been around that long. You know, they had, <laughs> now, when I was growing up, we had artists like the Sugar Hill Gang and Grandmaster <laughs> Flash and, and so many of those types of people. But now, it's, it's actually went through so many different uh, changes and transitions and Julie, you could probably fill us in more on that stuff because you grew up with it too. But um, Bring Rap Back, what's the concept behind the song Bring Rap Back? Um, So obviously a lot of music now is either like dance music or auto-tune. That's why I said like, you know, sound like Teddy P, you know, T-Pain, mm -hmm. you know, the, I like the Jersey Club music, you know, I just want to mm -hmm. dance around dancing in the videos and it's not rap. You know, mm -hmm. it's just more like like boppy music where everybody claims they're a rapper or mm -hmm. I rap. Mm -hmm. So on that one, I just wanted to, to vent, speak mm -hmm. on that. I also want to speak on my personal life. Okay. Bring that to the music. I do that in all my songs. Mm -hmm. So I mean, me making that song, I just want to bring rap back. Give you that raw and grimy feel of mm -hmm. just rap, like bar for bar for bar, and then mm -hmm. switch up the flow, speed it up, slow it down. Like, I'm going to really rap to you. I'm sure mm -hmm. what, like, rap is really about mm -hmm. the same thing Big used to do or Lil Wayne, you know, mm -hmm. or 50 Dead from time to time, mm -hmm. Tupac, you know, like. Snoop Dogg, all the rappers, mm -hmm. people that really rap. 
Okay. So I mean, I just want to know, just broaden my horizon, you know, show you my talent for real. Mm. Now you mentioned those rappers. Are they some of your favorite rappers that probably inspired you to be in the game or? Yeah, yeah, they they was a big influence on mm-hmm. me with the music coming. Up. There's some heavy hitters there, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm real big, like I'm heavy on Biggie. Mm-hmm. Heavy but you like the okay, but you like the real rap though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the rap, like I said, the rap has changed a little bit over the years, hasn't it, uh, Julian? Absolutely. And the question I have for you was that when did you? Because we're like what about ten years or so apart. So yeah. like, when did you see that shift happen? From when uh, you say like it was real, and I don't know if like when you think about bring rap back, if you think about you know the lyricism of it as well, but like right. when did you see? Because, again, I feel like an old man every time I'm talking about, you know, I don't see the lyrics. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's much younger than, than us, so, you yeah, know. but, <laughs> again, I saw a definite shift at some mm-hmm. point where I felt like there was less pressure on being unique and less pressure on not biting to where it's just now kind of microwavable cookie cutter. But right. I don't want to put that blanket statement on it because, again, I know I'm a little bit older. But, obviously, from what you're seeing, from what you're saying, yeah, you definitely see a shift. I see the same thing you yeah, see. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So when did mm-hmm. you see that kind of occur? Um... I see early two thousands. It was there was still some heavy hitters there. Yeah. I'd say about like twenty fourteen fifteen. That's when I really got to like instead of rapping, everybody wanted to harmonize mm-hmm. or melodize a little bit. You know, use the auto tune like little yeah. Uzis and be like P and B rock and a boogie. You yeah. know, like Lil Durk want to rap, but then harmonize a little bit. Like so, I I think I say around like twenty fifteen fourteen. That's when it started to change. You and know, it's crazy too. Not to cut you off, but yeah. like the harmonizing. Because, again, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, Bone Thugs, right? Or even, like, 50, you know what I mean? Even, you know, Ja Rule was right, harmonizer right. first, took him out the way, and then 50 started harmonizing too. But, like, it was it was hard. It was still good music. Mm-hmm. But now the harmonizer still feels like, it still feels like fluff. It doesn't feel like it's unique or it doesn't feel like it's really, it feel like gives it's kind of artistry. It. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody's doing it. Yeah. And then so. I feel like that's an easy way for upcoming artists to get put on. Like, oh, yeah, I sound like Lil Dirk. Watch this. And then mm. start harmonizing. Well, I can switch up my flow like a boogie and do this. Like, yeah. instead of something unique, it's like creating your own sound. So, like, that's why I'm like, my my sound is like raw. Like, there's no, like, I harmonize from time to time certain songs. Yeah. But that's just a sort of versatility. I can do it. That's not my go to. Mm-hmm. Kind of show you, like, oh, yeah, I'm able to do what you do, mm-hmm. but yeah. this is what I really do. Mm-hmm. So, like, I really rap. Like, mm-hmm. I can really spit bar for bar. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had dropped the EP back in like 2021 and had about six songs on there. The intro was me bar for bar rapping. Yeah. Second song, I'm rapping when the player on my voice, harmonize a little bit. Mm-hmm. Third song, I'm back to rapping. I'm venting mm-hmm. now. I had like a Will Smith skit in there. I had a Rocky skit in there. And I'm mm-hmm. rapping and spreading down my life. After that, harmonize a little bit, but then I'm really rapping in the song. Last song, Raw, I'm rapping to you. Mm-hmm. And I think I had another song in there. It's like a love song. I'm harmonizing and breaking down stuff. Mm-hmm. So like, I, I want to show you the versatility of what I can do, but what I really do. And then, you know, bring rap back. I would speak for herself that I'm, I'm rapping to you. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to bring it back. Check my resume. Now, mm-hmm. that, exactly. That, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That EP, that was the, was As I Recollect. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, I listened to that. I did. Okay, uh, okay. And a couple things. I, I was, first of all, just the title took me out. Because, you know, As I Recollect, that's kind of <laughs> where 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 did that come from? Oh, so it was me basically just, if you listen to the whole thing, you see I'm breaking down my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm breaking down things in my past, you know, my my father not being around for right. part of my life. My mom getting diagnosed MS. Come to find out a time later, you know, she was misdiagnosed. But at the wow. time, that's what I was going through. Wow. Right? So then there's a song in there called Pain Without Relief. Mm-hmm. And, like, you see part in the second verse that I'm talking about that, you know, like, thinking about times I missed out my mom, whatever, whatever, being sad. Right. Because I wrote that right after I heard the news. Like, I think she told me midweek, probably like a Wednesday, Thursday. Right. I went home. I locked in. I wrote, I think, probably about by, like, Tuesday next week. I had the song recorded. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I got to get this out. Like, when I was on the phone with her, she told me, I was like, staying strong. Like, you good, ma, whatever, whatever. We're going to beat this. or be everything else. Right. Hung up with her. I'm at work. Clock out. I'm in the car. Driving home. Start crying. Right. Mm-hmm. It, just, it, it just hit me. Like, mm-hmm. I might lose my mom. I didn't know what MS was. Mm-hmm. Right. I just knew it was a, 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 like a disease, a diagnosis. Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking Wasn't worse. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking the worst. I'm thinking mm-hmm. like cancer and all types right, of stuff. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm just in a car driving. I'm like, I might lose my mother. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I, I can't deal with this. Mm-hmm. So then that whole weekend, I'm just locking up. Like, I got to find something I can lock in with a beat just a vent on. Um, but back to As I Recollect, you know, it was just, I have a song in there like, you know, how is it? And I started breaking down like, oh, how it was cool with old homies. But then this happened. We fell off. Unbreakable. It was just the outro. I talk about what I went through, how I fell off. But now you see me, I'm still standing 10 toes and I'm locked in making songs at third. And I had a speech at the end breaking down like where I messed up at, being arrested and 
like mm-hmm. went off, like went mm-hmm. off my path, mm-hmm. but I'm still here now. I, like I found my way back. Mm-hmm. Right. So me, me doing as a recollect, naming it that is just me recollecting back to what I went through and then trying to help you like understand, like, look, you can go through stuff as long as you get back on the right path. Right. Like you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Thank, thank well, in the, in the, in this, one of the, I think it's bring rap back. You talk about the OGs in that. Now explain what, what is that? The influence of them uh, taught you different things? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a real heavy big fan. Like okay. I, I, I love big. Okay. Yeah, I can sit there and listen to Ready to Die on, mm-hmm. on repeat. For so like that's what you mean straight. by OGs that the old the older artists. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like big mm-hmm. Pac, um, Lil Wayne, Fifty, uh, Snoop Dogg from here and there, even mm-hmm. Ice Cube. Um, look, Big Daddy Kane, Raw. Like I just I, I like the older rap. You know, that made you like. Eminem, and mm-hmm. sit there and just bop your head and listen. Mm-hmm. Like, Storytelling, like, like yeah, like they, they talking in here, like. Mm-hmm. And I compare that to now, but like no one's talking in these songs no more. They just throwing out random stuff mm-hmm. and jumping around and mm-hmm. dancing or singing or harmonizing, mm-hmm. and that was just catchy. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, it's just that's what it is trying to make a catchy song to get put on, and make money. Mm-hmm. I was like, but y'all not, y'all not talking in these songs. Y'all not rapping. Y'all not breaking nothing down. Y'all, not, right. what y'all talking about? Right. So it makes me mad when I just hear like it. Mm-hmm. You're not, they're not talking about nothing. Exactly. You're talking about something in your song. You really, you really put yourself into your music. It's the intensity of it and mm-hmm. the words that are coming out of, out of your mouth. Obviously, you're inspired from you're inspired from your life experiences, right. you know, for that. So um, now, being an educator myself, I work in education, as you well know. Mm-hmm. Um, how does it feel like? And a, a lot of because a lot of young people are going through some of these things, and then they have to, you know, be responsible for their family things, and then go to school. How is how is that? Um, like were you, when you were experiencing the things, like you said, with your mother and those particular right. things, was this a period when you were going through school? Were you experiencing these things? I mean, how did you manage that? Um, let's see. My mother's situation that happened sometime after. Okay. Right. Um, a lot of stuff was, yeah, me coming to obviously in school. I was a kid. Like mm-hmm. my brother was here with me the whole time, so right. we we could both speak on how like we started off poor. We was homeless, like, mm-hmm. sleeping okay. in shelters and Section Eight welfare sleeping on people's couches basements like it was times i looked at my mom like we'll be sleeping at night and she looked dead in my eyes like i don't know i gotta figure it out like okay. we walking blocks and blocks all around trenton trying to figure out what we're gonna do tonight so and a lot of this happened i'm still in school so like mm-hmm. she'll get up hop on the bus take me to like you know take me to school whatever whatever we'll walk to school get out she walked and get me from school and now we gotta find what we're doing like, mm-hmm. so a lot of this was going on in school and i'm not i don't talk about my life to people like, of course I, I, I hold it in like, right I feel like I have to be strong. Mm-hmm. Like I seen her go through, go with these, go, mm-hmm. ah, go mm-hmm. through what she went through. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have to be there, like to hold her up, you no, know, pick her up, be there from the shoulder she can cry on from time to time. And mm-hmm. sometimes she had to cry on me. Mm-hmm. It was, it's, it's, it's a different pain when you feel your mom hug you and cry oh, on your absolutely. shoulder. Yeah. Like it, you look at it different, like mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. And this is us here. So I always kept everything in, and then just my music, is just something I could do. Vent to, a just, chance to release that. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that they're going through all of that, you know, especially when you're in school. And I, I bring up educators because, you know, some people like even they may not know that, okay, this student is really going through all of these uh, um, emotional things right. as well as trying to deal with schoolwork, as well as trying to be on the sports team. Maybe you could speak to that, uh, Tawan, because you're doing your sports and boxing and things like that. And how do you manage all of that as a young person? And, you know, um, honestly, it was like, so at the time, like when, like he said, when we heard that our mom had MS at the time, it was hard to handle. But at the end of the day, it was like, I knew I couldn't let her see me weak at the time. Okay. She needed to, she needed to see me be strong. So she's mm-hmm. strong at the same time too. So everything I did was really like to motivate her, keep her going. Like if I can do this and beat this, I need you to be here for me too and mm-hmm. beat this too as as we go together, kind of like we a team, like all of us, we we say this all the time, like we all in this together, we all we got, right? Like, and and it's crazy because like our stories, like really, it's like really crazy, like. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people go through stuff, mm-hmm. and probably more than us, but like some of the stuff we've been through, it's like we shouldn't have got out of sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'd be surprised, and, but, like we really made this far, mm-hmm. but we always find a way though, and like, mm-hmm. and it's like. You, I, you just gotta thank God on it, honestly. You just pray on it and everything, and you gotta stay positive. What I like about both of you guys, you're both very positive. I mean, the times that I've known you, you know, for several years, you know, through the school system and everything, but 
you know, you're always positive. You always got a smile on your face. Always positive. I mean, how do you manage to do that? I mean, what what advice can you give to people that are in the school or educators? Like, what can you what do you need from us to help support you other than just teaching and giving, you know, uh, curriculum? Is there anything that we can do to help you guys? You know, um, for this, I'm just saying this for, for people that are maybe going through what you guys went through at the time right. you were in school. What can we do or what can we do to support you? How can we better support you? And be, be understanding. Yeah, I, I was definitely about be to understanding. say that. Mm-hmm. Be more understanding. Like, it's even like out of school, like people even older than us, it's, mm-hmm. everyone goes through stuff. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, literally. yeah. We all do. You yeah. know, so. Mm-hmm. Everyone. You know, like, yeah. problems don't have an age on it at all. And, like that needs to be real understandable like regardless i know that's everyone's go-to like when times get hard it's like man i just want to quit like i'm it might be over for me but i feel like you know like when you got a good mm-hmm. shoulder and a bad shoulder it's mm-hmm. like like it's, it's it's over for you bro but mm-hmm. it, you gotta have that that one mm-hmm. person that's motivating you like bro mm-hmm. keep going bro keep mm-hmm. pushing like it's not over like you're not at the finish line yet. Mm-hmm. Just keep pushing yourself. Bro. You know, you, you never give up. You never give right. up. I mean, never. even even to me in, in, in my career path and trying to do the things that I've did, um, it took a while to get, you know, to be to become, you know, somewhat of a success in, in, in what you're doing. It takes time to do it. You never give up. Never. Ever, ever give up. I mean, may, what it takes, I try to tell people what it takes is what it takes. I and mean, you meant to go through that. You know, to get something, you got to go through something, you know, so that's, so that, that's definitely. definitely a thing. But it's good to be able to have that release to be able to to get that out there. Julian, you had the question? Yeah, I was thinking you guys are both involved in very disciplined crafts. Like boxing is extremely disciplined. I mean, a lot of people, I think, see it on the surface, what it is as far as like the sportsmanship goes. But like the actual training itself is all about discipline and discipline of yourself. And the same thing with artistry of, you know, any kind of creative writing, any kind of, you know, uh, creative output. Right. What did those two disciplines teach you in your life at this age? And what do you think you could take into like the next stages of your life from those crafts? Not everything goes as planned. That's what I learned doing this. Mm. You just today, I had plans to have a whole entourage with me and a cameraman and all that. Now, as I'm getting ready to leave and hop in my car and head up here, I get cancellations. I can't make it, bro. Just popped up. Just popped up. Yeah. So my brother asks, "Yo, such such coming? Such such coming?" Nah, it's just me and you. Come on, mm-hmm. let's go. It's just you got just you got roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then, like I said, everything don't go as planned, but as long as you keep going, you yeah. got, I'm sticking to my plan. My plan is to come up here, do this interview, and mm-hmm. handle business. Mm-hmm. Reinforces the fact that you're solid mm-hmm. and that your brother's solid. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? I was about yes, to say yeah. that. It goes back to that. You guys got mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. No oh, matter yeah. what else falls, Definitely. you got each other. My mother instilled that in us because mm-hmm. coming yeah. up, all we had was each other. It was literally just my older brother, my mom, mm-hmm. my brother. My youngest brother, he was on my dad's side. So I didn't really see him too much. Mm-hmm. But it was really the four of us in the household or going through what we went through. Yeah. She always said, when I leave this earth, my three sons better have each other's back no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like, even right now, we live together. My mother doesn't live my mother. Us. Yeah. We got our own crib together, just three of us. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. You got a good, good mother, good parents, you Absolutely. know, to be able Definitely. to, to instill that into you. Like, you. You can see it in, in both of you. You know, like I said, both very positive outrageous. young men. To be able to go through what you went through and to be able to just, you right. know, I never heard any negativity or anything from you. I mean, it's it's a great thing, and and let you know that things don't always go as planned. I mean, even even in our realm, you know, I, I've, I've had particular uh, guest or host is supposed to come. It's always a cancellation, but that's that's part of the business. Exactly. You know, it's it's all part of it. But the main thing is that you got here and you got here. And I was telling them, I I, I was telling the the crew here, I, I applaud these two gentlemen because you're supposed to be here at. At 4.30 on the dot, and he got here at 4.30 on the dot. You know, oh, 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 oh. I said, i never seen two young people so prompt and on the money. That says everything. But um, you did, and that does say everything. That really sets the tone, and that's part of being professional. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you're doing what you're doing, it's still a a professionalism that's part of of, of this business. And um, so uh, we're talking about your music and your latest single, Bring Rap Back. Um, 110, is is that your record label? Is that your own independent uh, entity? Um, That's actually Khan's Royal. Okay. Um, that's my cousin. He took me under his wing and taught me everything I need to know about music and mm-hmm. then had me flourish through it, you know. But that's his, um, he started as a clothing brand and he mm-hmm. wanted to turn it into a music label. Okay. And he said, well, you're going to be the first person I have under my label when I get everything settled. Mm-hmm. Technically, there's no contract signed. Right. But mm-hmm. I'm, I was going to be his number one. So what I did was I took the 110 and put it into my name, mm-hmm. you know, to show, like, show love to him. Like, mm-hmm. like, thank you for doing this for me. So when he asked me what you're, you know, artist name is gonna be. I said, well, "Cast One Ten." Mm-hmm. He asked where the cast come from. 
that's my past relative used to call me Casanova growing up. Okay. <laughs> so I said, all right, so to show my love to her, let me know she's gone, I'm going to take the Casanova, cut it down to Cas. Mm-hmm. So take the 110, put that together, and I'm sure I love both of y'all. So my appreciation to both of y'all. Okay. So 110, that's that's all him. That's just me showing love. Mm-hmm. Now, Khan's Royal, how's he doing now? I know he's a, he's a, was also an up-and-coming rapper, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout, shout out to Cas. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he's doing real good. We actually got a couple songs in the tuck that we didn't do yet, mm-hmm. or didn't put out yet. Um, we actually got a video we're about to shoot soon and put that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know he's been focusing on his life really. You know he just had a son a year ago. Okay, congratulations so, to him. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. trying to hold down the household right now. But pretty soon, yo, we we both working together. Mm-hmm. Now talk about your videos. Now you have a video for Bring Rap Back, and uh, you have a, a couple other videos up on your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So who does your videos, and how do you what's the how do you come up with that concept? I know you listen to the song, but they're very well done, by the way. Right, right. So thank, how thank. do you? Who does your videos? Uh, I shot my boy Capture Kings. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram, Capture Kings, mm-hmm. Capture with a K. Okay. Um, so my con- I don't like playing videos. You know, a lot of videos are just shot you just rapping in the same spots or different spots or homies behind you or whatever, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. So I try to like put a put a feel in there, give you like a little visual or something. So my videos I do with Cap is like a piece of my personal life. Like you see me on like, we act the freestyle. I'm rapping on. I'm sitting on the step. Rapping with a bunch of people there, they checking me out. At first, they're not feeling me. Mm-hmm. Then, as the song goes on, they're like, "Oh snap, yo, he, he, mm-hmm. alright." But it give you the visual of if somebody was walking down the block and you seeing people freestyle on the step. You was like, "Yo, can I jump in there?" Mm-hmm. They're like, "Yo, who was this?" And mm-hmm. then sit down, start talking. Like, oh, I like, I like, young boy. What's your name, yo? And then, mm-hmm. you know, they start banging with you. Um, bring rap back. That was just me. The video itself, what well, didn't have really no crazy concept to it. I just wanted to give you a raw. I wanted you to listen more than more than watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why you see me just in the house, different spots, sitting down. I'm looking at the camera new, like numerous times, letting you know, I just wanted you to listen to me. Mm-hmm. Don't watch the video, listen to what I'm saying. I'm bringing rap, I'm rapping to you. Mm-hmm. Um, what I got, I got still stressing. That's another video I have. That's me, like you see me in the house, we struggling, a little brother in there sitting there with empty living room, just on the, on the floor watching TV or whatever. I'm dabbing about, you see, I'm struggling about, I'm stressing about music and mm-hmm. stressing about money. How are we going to do this? Do this mm-hmm. Ah, do this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. And the song called Still Stressing. So you see, mm-hmm. at the end, I get in the car. My brother texts me, he's talking about, oh, we need such and such for this. I'm mm-hmm. in the car, I'm just breaking down, put my head on the steering wheel. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I'm mm-hmm. stressing in the video. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just, I try to create like a, like a strong visual to go with the music, you mm-hmm. know, because like the old, like how old videos do, like, Bunch of Chris Brown videos, you see him walking down mm-hmm. with the girl dancing, trying to get <laughs> the, the show. That's the yeah, goal, like right the there. neo videos and all that, man. Mm-hmm. So I, I try to give you a good, a good feel. Like you want to watch the video, and be like, mm-hmm. I'm just like I'm watching a TV episode, like a movie or something. Right. I want you to get locked in most mm-hmm. of the times. Mm-hmm. Now, with there being such a uh, heavy push to have an internet presence, right, a social media presence, do you uh, translate that into any live performing? Like, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's the, what's? Let me ask you this: Do you perform a trend? I haven't, haven't yet, no. Okay, because again, a lot of the venues are kind of you know going to Wayside. We used to perform at Mill Hill, and right. you know we may enjoy and all. So I don't really see it a lot. So with not having that presence there, where do you actually go to perform, and what's your um, just what's your process with trying to set up like a live performance routine? Um, so my live performance routine really is me bringing energy. Like my my energy is everything on stage. So I performed in Orlando, Florida. Oh, I performed wow. in Jackson, Dope. um, Asbury, um, Freehold. So I, I performed like a, like around it's a showcases. So I just pay for the slot. They yeah. say buy your tickets, sell the tickets, you get your slot. Mm-hmm. I buy the slot and I sell the tickets if I can get my money back. Mm-hmm. If I can't sell the tickets, oh well, at least I can perform. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not I'm Very not trying to perform for my people that I'm selling my tickets to. I'm from, I'm trying to steal your fans. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. okay. the artists there who mm-hmm. came to see you, like your fans came to see other artists. I yeah. want them to look at me like, oh, who's that? Mm-hmm. So if you watch my performances, you'll see like I'm jumping around stage, I'm sweating all crazy. Yeah. I'm I'm saying every lyric to my song, let you know I'm in tune with y'all. I'm I'm looking at the crowd, I'm taking a knee on certain spots. I'm looking at DJ, I'm like, yo, like cut the beat. Man, I'm about to just rap the rest of this a cappella. All right, go to the next song. Let's go. Like, I'm I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to get you in tune with me. Yeah. Do you think in places where Again, they're swinging, you know, up north and down south. Do you feel like just bringing that energy and just bringing yourself to the stage kind of helps bridge the gap in places where you might not have been originally appreciated? Oh, yeah. the sounds different. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's for sure. Um, I say because most times people come to perform like pumps, like performances and all that. They're not they to listen to a song. They just want to see something. True. Mm-hmm. So 
The visual thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Stick the phone up. Yeah. yeah, they're not about to sit there and like try to break down what he's saying. No, they came here to turn up. So right, that's, right. That's why I, I said I bring the energy to my, my mm-hmm. show. Was like I start off as a hype man. Mm-hmm. I was hype man for Royal. Okay, for Khan's Royal, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hype man, no mic. It's mm-hmm. just, he's sitting there rap. I'm in the background dancing. I'm I'm acting out what he's saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if he's saying like, oh, man, in the coupe with the ride, with I'm sitting there, act like I'm driving a car, jumping out of a car, mm-hmm. whatever. Like I'm I'm on stage going crazy. Mm-hmm. I had my dress at the time, so I'm on stage shaking my dress. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. People getting in tune to where they they're talking to him. It was like, yo, you guys a group? Like, well, who's that man you brought with you? I was like, I'm just a hype man. I just <laughs> I'm trying to get y'all in tune. I'm glad y'all was watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did my job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like you were in training for it though. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that was my like my come up for it though. Like me yeah. doing that was like, all right, now I'm ready to get on my stage myself and bring that same energy, but what I might write my own lyrics and still jump around, and give you the same energy, get you in tune with me, shake the dreads when I had them. Like, so what was that like when you decided to make that transition into I'm gonna do this myself? Right. Um, I know I was nervous. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I was nervous that I was gonna be able to bring the same energy because I'm like, now nah, I gotta rap it. Like now right. I have to I have to walk back and forth. Look, like look at certain sides of the stage, not just sit on one side and just walk back and forth and rap. I'm gonna jump around. I'm gonna point at you. I'll probably dap somebody up in the crowd, take a knee, whatever, whatever. Like shout out certain people. Like I see you back there, whatever. Come on, step up. Before I even start performing, like yeah, move a little close to the stage. Get in tune with me. Yeah, show me some love. Like so. Um, when I made that transition, though, like I, said, I was, I was nervous. You know, it was, it was difficult. And I realized the difference between being in the background, jumping around, getting you in tune, then going back for rapping, jumping around, getting you in tune. Because now I'm out of breath. Right, mm-hmm. so right. Preparing for after I did it like my first time, I was like, all right, next time I gotta be better. better. So I started working out crazy. When I started running. I started running like about like five miles. I mean, on a regular. I mean, working out doing the calisthenics. I'm like, all right, I gotta be in shape. I gotta right. be in tune. I gotta be able to have a stamina to move back and forth and still wrap. You know, my lungs gotta be right. Right. Yeah. So I started taking it way more serious when I realized that. Yeah, we probably figured out there's there's more to this performing thing exactly. than just knowing the lyrics or whatever. And a lot of people do that. Like upcoming artists, they just Sit through the mic, walk back and forth, and just rap. I'm like, exactly. and that's why I said like people aren't there to listen to you; they want to see a show. So mm-hmm. like, I can't just do that. Mm-hmm. So like, so, me if they want to listen, they just put the record on, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, you, know. <laughs> you go on Apple or YouTube if you want to yeah. just listen. They yeah. didn't come here for that. They yeah. want to see something. Yeah, performance is very important. You you doing it, man? I'm I'm, I'm you know like I said, you're really doing it. And I I seen uh, Tawan in some of your videos too. Wasn't even one of your videos that you oh, got? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which about like what two or three of them? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. He was in my first something one like actually. My okay. first still shows my first video I shot, and it was just me and him in there. Okay, and then I had the we act the freestyle. I had my my brothers in there, mm-hmm. a couple homies in there. And he was in there too. Mm-hmm. Bring rap back. I was gonna put him in there. I was like, ah, I can't have him in every video because mm-hmm. like I got the same. You look like them. I said I got somebody else some exposure. Mm-hmm. One of my other childhood friends, he hasn't been in no video before with me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, it's gonna be me and you in here for this one scene. Mm-hmm. So when you see me on the couch. It's me and him sitting side by side. Other two clips, I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, so. That's me just showing some love to people around me. Mm-hmm. And I seen the video you had. You had, um, you know, the Eagles in there, and you had the Dallas in there. Now, who's the Dallas fan? Because we're gonna tell him about himself. You right, know, right here, right here. <laughs> Ain't no shame in my game. Hey, hey, Kevin, we gotta hook him up with uh, with um, Tony Graham from the Temptations, since oh, they're both yeah, Dallas fans. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Tony Graham from the Temptations, lead singer of the Temptations, yeah. big Dallas fan, big they, Dallas they fan. Had, they had a little little. Wager. We had a little wager going on, so I saw, <laughs> next time I see the Temptations, I'm going to wear my, my my Eagles hat, you know. But uh, but I know Kaz, you know, you you you, you got to be with me, right? We Eagles, oh, right? Philly Green over here. Oh, Philly Green I'm over here. Mm-hmm. And then basketball, we're the same team, you know. We we like the Lakers, both of us, and I think that's a great thing because you know that the the Lakers got the king, right? Stop. But, uh, huh? Stop. Huh? Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, Stop. I'm talking about LeBron, LBJ, LeBron James, right? Yeah, he cool. Okay. He ain't right. no Jordan. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute now. He ain't no Jordan. <laughs> wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. <laughs> now, hold on now. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. So you okay, want to 20 me? years. Yeah, yeah. So, now, I, I promise I wouldn't go do this, but 20 years. Here we go. Going on the t- year 21. All right. 22. He's getting ready. Yeah, okay. So he's getting ready to do Just have. Play he, out. And how many rings he got? He has four. Four. He's going from ring number five. I'm sorry. Okay. Jordan, Jordan has six. Right. Well, okay. But he did that in six years and that was it. And he was done. LeBron Whoa. has been. LeBron has this extended career, and uh, he. Your man has he, played twenty years with four okay. rings. Twenty Probably played fourteen with six. Okay, but only six years have been done. You know, so 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 we you know. How many that's scoring that. titles? That's uh, the. Got? That's the. Four rings, going for ring five. He's going. He's going. He's going. He's going. He's going. He's going, he's going, he's going, he's going <laughs> when he's done, he's going to have seven rings, right, Julian? Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Get back up here. Now we know Jokic and Giannis in the league. Okay. Oh well, we'll see. We'll see. But it's, it's been an interesting season, you know, so far, and uh, we'll see what Did happens. Just get this year. 
Yeah, no, he did right. I don't remember that. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to see that <laughs> in a conference. I, 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 right. I didn't see that. You need to stop, Chicago. You got a Chicago hat on, so tell Jordan. Okay, all right. I, sh- I knew I should have bought my Lakers hat. Jordan. I told this. Hey, I told this man. You know, more embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's a good thing. But you know, we we, we go on for we go on for it this year. Ain't gonna happen, huh? Huh? Ain't gonna oh, happen. No oh well, who's gonna stop them? They, have yeah, you ever heard of a young man by the name of? Have you heard? Of, I, I said this to Tony. Have you heard of a young man by the name of Jalen Hurts? It hurts, don't heard, it? Huh? It hurts, Her, don't it? Don't it? Hold don't on, it? Hold on, tell him about it. Tell him about it. Hold on. <laughs> I ain't got to tell him about it. You see him? You see Jalen? You mean Jalen Hurts out there with arms folded, husky? Prescott about to snap out. this year. That's all I gotta say. Okay. What? All right. That's the guy that folded to 49ers back yeah. back years. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I, I'm Hurts been in the league mm-hmm. less years than Dak, and he already made it. And made Super Bowl. This that quick? Yeah. Super Bowl. Crazy. Did y'all win it? MVP conversations. Y'all, y'all yeah. won it? Yeah. Y'all won it? Oh, yeah. when last time y'all won? Oh. How, how many rings y'all got? How many we got? How many you seen? <laughs> All right, look, watch this. How many you <laughs> seen? <laughs> look, I'm about to get him right here. When was the last time you saw uh, MJ play? I'd have to see MJ play. Exactly. I know his resume. I don't need to see the Cowboys. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> That's crazy. I, know, I know they did. It don't matter, bro. That's it don't crazy. matter. You got it. Well, the good thing is back. Good thing is that we're going back this year, right? Oh, My man, I don't know about that. No it's a doubt, tough season. No doubt about, about it. That. No question it's about tough, it. So. It's tough to but, go um, back. It's tough to go back. No, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah. We were talking about what well, we talk about athletes now, and I was listening to uh, you talk about you know your preparation for you know getting your mind right, getting to performances mm-hmm. and jogging and running, you know, get your lungs right. But you know, with you actually being a boxer, I want to know like what's your preparation to get your mind right before you actually get into fights, and what's your like well-rounded uh, just process to get ready for that. Um. Honestly, I say like so. For me, I'll run like probably like six miles a day. But my only problem is so right now. Recently, I had surgery. Okay. And I'm trying to get back into it. Like still, I'm like fully healed, but I'm like still training here and there. But right now, it's just like I don't know. Everyone's asking me like, when am I going to be back? Kind of. But I honestly still don't know. But like, I'm still like trying to get in shape. But it's like kind of hard because like. I'm still hurt at the same time. Absolutely. But my, the way I am now, though, like before my problem was the only reason I would get injured is because I wouldn't recover. My my mindset was like, if my opponent, if he's training right now, I should be training right now. Sure. I should be training way harder than him. If he's up at six, I'm going to be up at three. That's yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you needed that time just to kind of recover a little mm-hmm. bit before you jumped back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like mm-hmm. now it's like after surgery, it was like an eye opener. I was just on the couch for like nine months. And I was like, mm-hmm. bro, like, you, you gotta get together like you gotta really lock in and focus so like now like i don't i don't even go to parties i don't even hang out with friends anymore like literally i'm just training going mm-hmm. back to the discipline the Watch discipline. The highlights yeah. everything the mentality the discipline yeah. is important 100%. yeah so um before we go why don't you give out your show, socials so let us know where folks can uh find you and your music okay that's fine um so like you said i'm cast 110 you can find me on all social media cast 110 that's cas 110 once again, CAS110, that's YouTube, SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything. Go ahead, Juan. Um, y'all can catch me on Instagram, pretty much. That's, I'm not really on social media like that. I ain't have you mm-hmm. on that. But, yeah, Phenomenal Boxer, once again, mm-hmm. that's... Catch me on Instagram. I'm gonna come see you fight. I'm gonna come with you on you. So make sure you invite me to come. Invite us all. We are gonna come down and support you. Okay. <laughs> Finger, fingers crossed. We want to see year, you. I got you. We'll all right. Next Sounds year. good. Mm-hmm. And we'll be, be there for you year. too, brother. You keep doing what you're doing. It's yes, very, it was good to see you here. You too. And thank you for being on the show on the R&B Showcase. And uh, we appreciate you, brother, stopping by. And uh, I want to thank my my uh, co-host here, Mr. Julian Seward. Got thank you for having me. Another wonderful show down. Thank you, and Kevin yeah. White, of course, our co-host on the show. Always. And um, I'm Tim Marshall. And I want to thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase Live.